lost, residents run for their lives as bushfires race across Victoria. Overstretched fire crews battle to bring the crisis under control. And records tumble as Melbourne swelters through its hottest day ever. Live from Melbourne, this is 7 News with Jennifer Kite. Good evening. Victoria's worst fears have been realised today with wild winds whipping up dozens of fires around the state. Homes have been lost. And as we go to air tonight, there are blazes burning out of control around Victoria with more houses under threat. We start with Laurel Irving at Wandong. Laurel, what's the situation there? Jen, the remarkable thing about this fire is just how quickly it's moving. The wind here is unbelievably strong. The fire has changed directions several times this afternoon and the CFA has really struggled to keep up. A chilling sight. In just seconds, the flames raced up the hill towards a homestead. Helicopters and the sky crane buzz through the smoke haze, frantically dumping water on the running fire and desperately trying to save homes. This house in Wangdong's northern outskirts escaped. Others, though, were simply no match for the ferocity of the ravenous blaze. It started east of Kilmore. Within an hour, it had jumped the Hume Highway and was racing towards Wandong. residents had little or no warning. The Santos family was away when the fire came through and still don't know the fate of their house on the hill. I'm just, I'm numb. We've just seen flames going past it and we can't see the house though, so hopefully uh, everything's all right, you know. The cat is inside the house, so we don't know if we're going to survive. Some residents chose to stay and protect their homes and some of them appeared relaxed. Others, though, packed their precious possessions and fled. This couple packed two cars full to escape to Kilmore. I've got so much stuff here that I want to take and I can't grab. And, you know, I've got my boat and fish tanks and all that sort of stuff. It's a little bit scary thinking that it's, yeah, just all might go just like that. John, I think we're going to have to move. The blaze began around midday, but with winds gusting up to 100 kilometres an hour, it's already estimated to have burned more than 2,000 hectares and an unknown number of houses. The size isn't the problem, it's that it's burning in such a built-up area with so many houses in its path. It's still pushing southeast towards the Whittlesea area, and the wing has swung the fire in several directions. Many residents simply don't know whether or not they're safe as the fire burns close to homes where overstretched CFA crews are yet to reach. The fire is moving so quickly the CFA can do little but dump water from the air as residents pray for the cooler change to arrive as soon as possible. Laurel Irving, 7 News. Embers blown by the ferocious winds have triggered spot fires kilometres away from the main blaze. Kate Osborne is at one such spot fire. Kate, what's the situation? Jen, I'm at Glenvale, that's southeast of Wandong and north of Whittlesea. And the flames here have been coming down over this ridge for the last half hour and are now almost upon us. The residents here have had to make the agonising decision, do they stay, do they go? Some have decided to stay and we spoke to them a short time ago as they tried desperately to save their homes. OK, well, we put our thorough pay into action. And uh, at the moment we're getting ready to go indoors as soon as we have to. Uh, I've covered the north facing windows, I've um, blocked up the down pipes so we've filled the gutters with water, I've taken all the mats in, the animals are inside and uh, we're just doing all we can and just praying that uh, we'll be safe. How worried are you? Uh, well there's no point in worrying, it's, you're too busy thinking about what you're doing so um, the worry might come later. Just trying to wet it down, fill in the gutters. Clearing stuff from the fire load, just yeah, trying to stop stuff. How worried are you? Uh, 
I'm more worried than I should be. <laughs> very, very windy. It's really windy. We've seen things flying like half roofs, a little piece of a roof. And you've just decided now it's time to get out? Yeah, yeah. That, well, we can't stand no more. We've we'll tried our best. My maker's been begging me to get out of here, so we're going to have to get out. Dangerous. And of course, Jen, as the residents try to save their homes, they're also worrying about their neighbours. And some are panicking here, they tell me, because they can't get hold of them. So a very few tense hours ahead as they wait for the worst of the fire front to pass. Jen? Thank you, Kate. Gippsland is also under threat tonight with strong winds whipping up that fierce blaze burning in the Bunyip State Forest. A number of towns were in the firing line where residents have been forced to decide whether they flee or stay to fight the fire. Ben McNair has more. Just after one, the blaze roared to life. Tearing through more than 165 hectares of the Bunyip State Forest towards the town of Labatouche. In less than an hour, homes were under attack. Conditions too hot for ground crews, aerial bombers were the town's only defence. But there was little they could do to save some homes. Many residents were forced to flee. Starting to catch on fire and we've got about close to 100 dogs and about 250 cows there. And yeah, taken everything out because it's not good. As the focus turned to asset protection, reinforcements were called in more than 60 trucks. We won't know until after the fire calms down and we can and safely get crews out there to go around and see what the losses are. A spot fire jumped the Prince's Highway at Long Worry, threatening more homes. I think the way the wind's blowing, I think we'll be right. As you can see, there's not too much scrub here, but um, further back towards um, Labatouche and Jindabic now that way, uh, there's a lot of trouble. Flames again threaten major transmission lines, putting Melbourne's power grid at risk. The hot northerly pushing the front steadily towards Druin, where families did whatever they could to protect their homes. I've packed some stuff, be worried. Yeah, don't really want to cry, but it's yeah, just now. Yeah. Yeah. It's a bit close to home for us, I think. The wind is expected to swing around shortly and blow southwesterly. That could mean the front will dramatically increase in size and head towards Neerham. The front could be several kilometres long and in these conditions, almost impossible to fight. Experienced firefighters say they've never seen anything like it. I was the incident controller at Ash Wednesday at Upper Beak and uh, Beaconsfield and this is worse conditions. Ben McNair, 7 News. And Ben joins us now from CFA headquarters at Pakenham. Ben? Thanks, Jen. I'm joined now by Deputy Incident Controller David Nugent. And David, what's the current situation? Yeah, Ben, we've had a really tough afternoon, as I'm sure uh, a lot of people uh, would understand this afternoon. Um, the fire that we, we had earlier in the day uh, really took a big run about the middle of the day, about, uh, about one o'clock, and it started to spot many kilometres uh, in, in front of the main fire front. Uh, some of those spots got down right down to the, uh, down to the Princess Freeway, down towards uh, Druin, and even over towards Warrigal as well. And what are the main dangers tonight? Our major concern tonight, uh, we've got a significant southwesterly wind change which is going to come uh, around about 7 or a bit after 7 is our information at the moment. That's going to be a major concern for us because all of that, that fire that we've been dealing with that's been blowing from the north is now going to be pushed in a different direction and uh, so we've got to, we'll be putting a lot of effort into, into working on that tonight. What are some of the towns most at risk? Well, the, um, the, the towns that have been at risk this afternoon, uh, I mentioned that the, the fire's been spotting in towards, uh, in around Druin and around Warrigal. It's now going to move, um, you know, towards uh, places like Neerham, uh, Neerham South, up in that direction. And we'll be working hard to, to make sure it doesn't get there. Thanks very much for that, David. So, Jen, obviously a lot of work still to be done here.